here. Okay, so we're recording. Um, <clears throat> what a great start to the year. I feel like these first, like, you know, 11 to 12 days has been incredible. Um, and the team's growing. The cells are really good thanks to the Valentine's Day launch. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to start this year off with you guys just chatting about leadership and <clears throat> if you're new to this and you're new to direct sales um, there are things that you can learn um, me for myself personally I did not know anything about leadership coming into a direct sales business I'm gonna mute everybody because I get real distracted um, and so Oh, sorry, Millie's awake, so she might be a little needy. Um, so I, like, when I came into it, I knew nothing. Everything that we have today is because I've been doing direct sales for three years, oh, almost four years, and I have Ashton and Shannon and a few other people who have done it for years to help. And so everything that we have is not just something like we started Color Street and right off the bat, we were incredible leaders and we knew what to do and um, we were confident in leading. It's just because over time it comes. You find what works for you, you stick with it, and then it becomes a system and you do it with every single stylist that jumps on board. <clears throat> so first thing I want to talk about is creating team culture. I think we have an incredible team. I think what we have is a very, very special, um, and it's because of each and every one of you. It is not just me, it's not just Ashton, it's not just Shannon, it's not just Tracy or Dawn, or like it's a team effort. Um, but one thing that I want to really stress is the bigger this group grows, the more and the more your team grows, the more you're going to not necessarily want to branch out, but the more that you're going to want your stylist to see you as the leader and not me. Um, I would much rather your stylist come in and think of you as the leader. Um, so with that, it comes a little bit more responsibility and you don't have to do this right away. Um, if you have three people on your team, don't feel like you have to do all this, but it's important to learn all this now so that when you do have a team of 200, you're not running around crazy trying to learn how to lead a team. You're already putting these things in place and I'm reading from notes because it is early in the morning. Um, but for team culture, what do you want your team culture to look like? What we have, I think is super special, but it's me, you know, like it's me. Um, Ashton, Shannon are extremely involved in it as well. You might not be like us. Um, we all have different things that we want in team culture. So start to think about what you want your team culture to look like. For us, it's all inclusive. We love to shout people out. Um, I don't know what yours would be, but just start to think about what you want that to look like um, and model that within your team chats. If you don't have a team chat yet, if you're a team leader and you are if you're on this call or above, I really encourage you to go ahead and start a team chat with just your girls underneath you. And that can sometimes be a little like confusing, especially if you have some girls underneath you that was, that was placed underneath you. Talk to your upline about that. Um, or whoever placed them underneath you, and y'all can kind of figure out if it's going to be something confusing to have her on your team chat or not. That's a whole different conversation. But go ahead and start a team chat. Um, I personally, when I got to director, <clears throat> I that's when I when I started the team page um, for several <laughs> reasons, obviously. But go ahead and start a team page if you want to start a team page. I know Shannon has one. I know Tracy has one. I think Dawn's about to start one. Um, <clears throat> and maybe even Ashton has one. Maybe even connect, um, you know, if you're upline, so like whoever's in between you and me doesn't have one yet, y'all work together. Do it together. Um, and then sit down and talk about what you want that team page to look like. We already have incredible training in our team page, thanks to everything that we've kind of worked together on making. Um, so use your team page for more as like a fun atmosphere, um, something that they can know that they that that's your thing. You know what I mean? Um, because I think it's really fun to know that like you and your team have your thing, and y'all are super close. Um, and so then we have like really close teams within our big team. 
Um, what do you want your stylist to be doing? So something else you can be sharing in your team chats and in your team pages is, um, is what are you doing every day in your business? So, I mean, we all chat about hosting parties, follow-ups, things like that. I think it'd be really neat if we can start sharing more daily, very consistently daily sharing about how we are sitting down for 30 minutes and we're getting work done. And here's the checklist that we have. So daily, consistently sharing what you're doing, like the little, um, the little things that people who haven't ever done this don't know what to do. They don't know what a follow-up is yet. So daily sharing that in your team chats that they can see you are doing this every single day and it's not just like a here and there thing. Um, and so they can kind of get an idea. This is all like, you just want to dumb it down for new stylists, okay? Um, my goal is always thinking about, if I was a new stylist, what would I want it to look like? When we do team calls and it starts to like, big words are getting thrown out and like you're, we're talking about hosting six to eight parties, like at the end of it, I'll always just say, if you're a new stylist, don't freak out. And I always try to, you know, think about if I was a new stylist, how would I want it to look like? Um, <clears throat> all right, setting the bar high for new stylists. So I think with coming in, and especially when you're new and when, when you're a new um, leader and you're signing people up, you don't want to freak them out. You don't want to run them away. And so you kind of just like, yeah, just do whatever you want. You make this what you want. Um, you know, you don't have to do parties or you don't have to be cute. Um, I don't talk that kind of talk. <laughs> like when I talk to my stylist, um, I kind of let them know, here's where I'm going. Um, like this is my full-time job at this point. Um, I need you to let me know what you want out of this so I can better help you. But I'm not going to start out just kind of saying, oh, do whatever you want. Like I let them know, I set the bar high. I, here's my checklist. I want you to be cute. I want you to hit your jumpstart rewards. And I confidently say that because I know what this has done to my life. Um, and I think each of us has been extremely blessed by this. And we can easily say, you know, we're very confident. And if you put these things into practice and thank God we have a simple product to share, then you can make something big out of it. But set them more high and remind them that they're their own boss. You're not their boss. You're their mentor. You're going to guide them along the way, but you're not going to, you're not going to hold their hand the whole way that they're going to have to figure this out. You know, they're going to have to take the steps um, <clears throat> and then teach them how to create their own pace and how to create their own hour, their work hours. Um, that's something extremely important, especially as leaders that we are working business hours and then we are with our family and we are living our lives. Um, I think this is an, easy um, company or business model to get obsessed with and you tend to obsess over it. And I mean, I am guilty. I think about it all the time. Um, but it's really important that we make business hours, we stick to them, and we teach our stylists how to do that. Because especially as leaders, if you are not doing this, you are going to get burned out. Trust me, you're going to get burned out. I've, I've gotten burned out so many times throughout my four years of direct sales. and it was all because I was obsessing and I wasn't focusing on the business and then focusing on my family. And you're, I just trust me, please do this, please. If anything, after you get off this call, promise me that you're going to make business hours and stick to them. Um, and then teach your stylist to do the same. Um, and then as a new stylist, obviously they're not going to be working the same amount of hours that we're working. So teach them 30 minutes a day. That's all you really need. Teach them what to do. Hey, Kayla. I see Kayla hopped on. Some more people are hopping on. Um, but teach them what to do. Sorry. <laughs> I have some drainage still from a cold like two months ago, and it's still driving me crazy. Um, okay. So lead by example. I want to talk about how BQing is not the minimum or maximum. What do I want to say? BQing is the minimum not the maximum. Okay, there we go. So we need to kind of throw, like, BQing is like the first step, okay? Um, le we're leading by example. So I want you guys, I know it's so hard because when you start to grow a team, a lot of your focus goes into managing a team, right? And then you kind of forget about yourselves. 
you have to continue to sell. And if you started out as a top seller, you better consistently be a top seller every single month. If you started out, you know, as a new stylist or as a stylist, you consistently, before you start building a team, was selling 600 plus, continue to sell 600 plus. Do not get into management mode because now you have three to four people and you want to make sure that they're BQing so you're rank advancing. You have to continue to sell and then lead by example and showing them that $300 is the minimum. You want a banana? You want a banana? Let me get a banana. Go sit on the couch. Sorry, guys. All right, go sit on the couch. She's my little monkey. She eats bananas like they're going out of stock. Um, so, and here's, and here's why, okay? So this compensation plan really rewards you for having stylists who sell well. Um, and this is because, you know, when you send someone up, they are on your level one until, until you move them, um, but they're also your direct enrollee, and you get an extra 3% on their sales. So you get a 3% on level one, and then you get an extra 3% on all of their sales. And then you have the indirect enrollee, which is who they sign up, and the same thing, no matter what level they're on, you get an extra 3%, um, depending on where you are in your rank. So that's showing us ColorShoot really rewards you for having good sellers. Um, so you want to lead by example. You want good sellers underneath you. So here's what I do. My, my, um, when it breaks down, good morning. When I break down, um, you, can, you know, you can go in your commissions and see what you make, and it shows you, it breaks down, like, your commissions and what you're making. My top category is um, my direct enrollee bonus. So that is my, my, my personally sponsored stylist. I have really, really, really good sellers. <laughs> and that is always my top money maker um, for now. So I have to always make sure I am leading by example and showing them your goal is not just to sell $300. Your goal is to at least get to enhance commissions and above. Um, so that's why it's really important to lead by example and not just start managing a team and only be queuing so that you're guaranteed your commissions. Okay. We want to continue to sell, continue to host those parties because continuing to sell is going to set you up to continue to recruit because it's going to, you're going to keep having that, um, funnel system that I talk about all the time. And that's really important. And we'll chat about recruiting in another, because that's a whole other big thing is to continue to recruit. <laughs> um, okay, so BQing is minimum. Oh, she fell off the couch. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Here you go. Eat your banana. Hold on. Let's just wait until she comes. Hey. Okay. 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 Hold on. If any Ashton or Shannon or anybody, if y'all want to say anything, any thoughts. Okay. Um, let's see. I was at BQing is minimum <clears throat> stress, um, daily activities, stress, um, business hours, and then sharing that. That's what I want to start doing more. And that can be within our team page, big team page. It can be within your team chats, but I do want to start stressing, um, daily that more. So us posting more about what we're doing. Um, with that, I guess my question is, does everybody have an idea? Like when you go to sit down and work, do you 
know what you're doing or are you kind of just flying by like not really knowing what to do you just you do what you feel like you need to be doing at the moment does that make sense like does everybody have like I know what I'm going to do honestly I just wing it you wing it well I also work full time so I like find pockets that I can I think a lot of it is catching up in like the chats Mm -hmm. because those are like like blowing up throughout the day. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like, I don't know how you do it with office hours and then go mm-hmm. in into your messages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's and that's what I want to teach you guys is how to like sit down and when you like go into business mode, you have like your list and you know what you're doing and you have like a game plan. So here's what I do every single time, and this is basic stuff that as a stylist, they need to be doing the same thing. So this is the kind of stuff that I want to be sharing more about. Um, First thing I do when I sit down is I go into the team page and I catch up on anything I've missed because a lot of, I mean, we know we get notifications nonstop. So there's a lot of things we can miss. So I go into into the big team page and I scroll until I catch up. Um, and then I go into my VIP page and I do the same. I scroll until I catch up because there's a lot of times that I've missed when, um, you know, a customer is posted. And then I do the same within all my groups. So however many groups you have, write them down and then check them off when you go in and you make sure you've caught up. Um, I also make sure I'm posting in those. Obviously, that's kind of like a given, but I have that written down. There's like, even if you feel like it's a given, write it down. That's what I call brain dump. I brain dump everything, even if it's something that I should be doing every day and I know I should be doing every day to get it out of your mind so it's one less thing you have to think about, put it on paper, okay? So like just have a, like I literally, it's nothing fancy, I'd love to get something fancy. I literally have a notebook, here you can put it. I literally have a notebook and it's just brain dump. I literally make a list and I check it off. Um, So I I do team pages first, and then, I, um, and then I do messages. So I go through, don't open a message until you're ready to write back. Because that's the biggest mistake I used to make, is I would open up a message, and then I would get busy, and then I would forget to write them back, and then it was, I lost a customer, or <laughs> I lost a sale, or whatnot. Um, I mean, don't feel like you have to get back to them right away, but just knowing that, if it's unread, you can go through in your business hours and, and do it. Um, <clears throat> I'm all about working efficiently. So if you are in our leader chat and you're just chatting away, it's totally fine. I hope that's not being done in your business hours, though. Okay, so like business hours are for working. Um, what else do I do? I mean, obviously the follow-ups. And then if you go in our units section, we have the six P's. So it's basically like a checklist that you can print off. And we're constantly wanting to update that. Me, I mean, me, Ashton, and Shannon are always talking about like making an updated checklist. Um, so maybe we'll eventually get that done. Um, but there's already something in there and you just add to it. Like you can literally print it off and then start writing underneath it. Um, and sh- just the biggest thing, sharing this with your new stylist. Okay. Obviously, they're not going to have some of the things that we have to do. Um, but yeah. Anything, any other questions? Um, okay, one last thing, and then if we want to chat about anything else, we can. Um, I know I had mentioned like when you start to when you start to sign up stylists and they start to sign up stylists and then you get really excited, you got a team and it's going great. Your, your like automatic response is management mode. Now you're like, now you just want to like kind of forget about your, your little business and just start managing and and making sure your girls are doing what they're supposed to do. Um, A long time ago when I was in Beachbody, I heard somebody, I don't remember who it was. But they said to always focus, even when you have a team of like a thousand, you're still focusing 70% of your time on your business. That's your customers, your hostesses, your follow-ups, your um, recruiting, your getting samples out there, 
just the basics of the business, what you would do if you were just a stylist. And then 30% of that time is spent on your team, which is that not kind of like a crazy, I feel like it's so easy for me to want to do 70% to the team and then 30% to my business. But to continue to grow, you have to make sure that you're putting in most of your time to your business and continue, because what's going to happen is people are going to fall off. It's just, I mean, it's just a nature of the business. People fall off. So you have to continue to work your business, continue to recruit. So to, to continue to recruit, you have to continue to host parties and get samples on people and do the, the basics, which get very boring, but it's very important. Hold on. Just what? Okay. We'll talk about it later. All right. Any questions? I hope that was helpful. Don, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was trying to find the unmute button. Um, there's been some chats this morning on my little group about scam things that were happening. And so several of them got those emails, I think last night and the night before, and were didn't realize it was a scam. So maybe just make sure your team members know that's happening. Um, Cause they were like, Oh, I got a new order. I need to contact this email. And it, but then Megan was like, no, that's, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe just know that your people tell your people that, that that's yeah. happening. Don, several, you... of them, several of them got them. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Don, will you post that in the team page? Like the big yeah. team page too? Yep. Yeah, I know that was going on right before Christmas. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Jackie, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I have a question. So you had mentioned the other day that with your new stylist, like you put them all in a chat and you check in with them. What? Are, so are you creating a new chat for those people? How long are they in there? How long are you keeping that like an open chat? What are you doing with that? Yeah, I just started this a couple of months ago. Um, and I, I mean, I, obviously the more recruits you have, the more you need it because it's a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot out of you. But um, I open it up. Here's what I do. I add all my new recruits. Um, usually like every four weeks it's not really monthly because it's kind of hard to like juggle that um so like i just kind of wing it like when i know i have a lot that sound close together i add them in a chat and then i add one of like my newer stylists who's not technically like oh okay good not like brand new but um is newer and who has been very successful. So like I added one of my girls, Jocelyn, who is incredible and she signed up at the very beginning of December to my chat with like my mid-December new January new stylist. Um, and so she's able to kind of help me. So it's not just me giving like all these tips, it's like a newer stylist who's had a really great success, who's also really cool in there to help too. And for Jocelyn, it's kind of like a way that I'm um, grooming her, I guess, to be a leader because I'm going to start probably building her because she's incredible at sales. She needs a little bit of help with building. And so it's a way that I'm kind of teaching her to lead, if all that makes sense. Um, and we just literally chat about the basics. Um, I get in there. I don't get in there every day. And they don't chat every day. And not all of them chat. Um, but... I just share, you know, little things like kind of like a poll. I do a lot of polls like, okay, today who put samples out, who um, got a poll, things like that, um, that I feel like, um, you know, I don't know. That help. Okay, thank you. I don't know if that helps. Um, and that's not really something that you have to do. Um, and I probably won't do it every month because some months I'll only probably have like one or two recruits. And it might not be necessary. But when you have it, I would say when you have at least three or four um, in, in like a three to four week period, I think it would be efficient to do that because 
once you start getting that many recruits in a small amount of time, it, I tend to get overwhelmed. And that's at my, okay, so, you know, I talked about the 70% focusing on your, your business and then 30% focusing on your team. Within that 30% that I'm focusing on my team, like 25% of that is going towards my new stylist. Um, because I want to put way more effort and energy into my new stylist and getting them started right. Um, because if you get them started right, then you're not going to have to put a lot of energy into them as they grow. You know, like obviously things change. Like I'm putting more energy into the leaders um, than I am anything else. Um, and with that, it, it's because we already have these systems in place. You know, like it's, I'm all about systems. So like I took a lot of time in the beginning to make all these systems so I don't have to run around crazy. Like it's literally just a new stylish training and um, you know, all my time and energy really goes into the new stylist and then everything kind of snowballs. Like you don't really have to put, okay, so here's my thing and I'm not trying to be me, but I have stylists who signed up with me in the very beginning and I just don't put a lot of energy into them. And it's not because I, I don't care about them, but it's because they've done nothing. Like if they're not at a leadership position at this point, they don't really care about the business. And so I'm not going to waste my time on them. So I've just learned to put my time and energy into like the things that I know that are going to build our, our team. And that's always focusing first on new recruits and getting them started right. Um, and then from there, you, you kind of learn where to put your energy. I hope this helped. You can have some of that, yes. Yeah, it is peanut butter. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have that. No, I don't think about it. Sorry. Any other questions? Yeah. No? Yeah? <laughs> All right. Do y'all want to chat? Um, I mean, we have a few minutes. Do y'all want to chat about anything in specific? Um, I think the next week, so like this coming up week, um, I think it'd be fun to focus on getting our stylist to, hey, can you give me like five minutes and then I'll go off. Um, uh, getting parties, booking parties. I think these last two weeks of the month or two and a half weeks, we need to be focusing on sales. We focus on recruiting in the beginning of the month and then sales like the last two thirds of the month. Um, and so I was thinking of doing like a incentive for booking parties. So kind of like a booking party challenge where I don't know, and y'all can help me with the details if you want. Um, but whoever, like every party you have booked between now and the end of the month, you get an entry, or we could even do it just like a week long. And then I'm going to give away just like something, something fun. Um, what do y'all think about that? Yes? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be good. Um, I mean, are you going to post it on the page or like for them to comment on? Yeah, yeah. So we would just do, bless you. We would just do, um, you know, just like we've always done our little challenges where we, I post like a cute little graphic and it says all the details and then they comment with like a screenshot of their back office where it has like the wow. date, you know, and things like that of when it was booked. Um, the only thing about that, though, is that um, a lot of us use one link for, like, the entire month or a week or two. So, like, I have a few parties who use the same link just because not all parties qualify, but I still want the rewards if they don't. So, yeah. like, um, like, if they don't hit the... 150 but they're close I mean I still send them you know a free set but um like if they don't hit the rewards I don't want to waste them right. so like right now I have two parties in one link 
Yeah. Um, I mean, here's, here's just my idea on that, which that is, I, I fully support that. I don't support that for newer stylists because I feel like it's very confusing. And um, I want our newer stylists just doing the basics. Um, and that's, these challenges are all for new stylists. They're all for our stylists who, who even not newer ones, just ones that are still a stylist. I think, though, that one of somebody has seen it on the page and was asking about it in my chat. So I think that a lot of my new stylists, I mean, that's what they're doing. Like, they have a party, they have a link, I guess, for the week. Yeah. In case they have like a couple parties that same week. Yeah. So I have a thought on that, Jackie. Okay. What, what if they screenshotted like the Facebook group? If they're doing it that way, they could screenshot the Facebook group for the new party. That's fine. And if it's a, if it's a in-person party, they can just screenshot um, the event or something like that. Um, so should I be telling them to just do one link and not, because I don't know where they saw it from, but I mean, I've always done that. But I didn't, like, I don't know where they. Well, okay, so I, like I said, I fully support it. I think it's fine. I don't personally do it because for me and my mindset, my, and, and what Tracy said Thursday night, was that last night? No, Thursday night on the team call. Uh-oh, go get it. Um, was going in expectant. Like, I know not, and I'm not, like, being naive thinking, like, oh, you go in with a good attitude and you're going to get a great set. Like, I know some of them are going to bomb. I get that. But for me, I don't think that I like to encourage stylists to do that because, because then, like, it takes the pressure off of them pushing a little bit more. So, like, for me, I only do one link for one person – because if it's sitting at 1.30, I'm not going to think, oh, well, I have somebody else that's going to add to it. It'll be fine. It's like the pressure's on. I need to get them to one, at least 150. So that's just me personally. So I think we can share ideas. That's totally fine. But um, just people are going to do, are going to have different ways that they do things. Um, but I think it's a great idea for this challenge to just have them screenshot um, they're the party, the actual party. Totally fine. I'll do that for sure. Any other ideas for that? <laughs> I mean, I always do it like, I feel like everybody's like, oh, Kendra Scott. <laughs> but I can do, I mean, what can we do? I mean, I like the idea of like giving them things that help their business. Like a whole, I love the idea of like a, you know, gift card to Vista print or something like that. I don't know. But then like Shannon brought up months ago, how like this is the type of business and a lot of us are moms, you know, so like we don't ever treat ourselves, especially when like we get money. So I think it'd be, I think it's fun to do the fun incentives of like a piece of jewelry or a wallet or something like that. Do y'all agree? Or is there some, like a neat idea? I agree, um, but I do have one other, like, idea that y'all may or may not think is good at all, but a lot of times I have stylists who join that don't have, like, the funds to get any stock, and so I get a lot of, like, them frustrated with that, you know, they're like, I just don't have anything on hand, people are asking me if I have anything that they can get this week or whatever, so, I mean, yeah. I wonder if even that might be an idea, like, Maybe we can all pitch in, like, one set to give. Yeah, I love that. I was thinking the same thing. Like, how cool to give them, like, what, 18 <clears throat> sets? Like, something, yeah. I mean, no, no. especially for those of us that have stock. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would gladly <clears throat> pull two or three for mine if that yeah. means it's going to make somebody excited to be here, let alone make – like help them get us you know have some sales or you know whatever what if we even did like two winners and they each got eight sets yeah that'd be good and i think because see even some of the girls who are like pre-selling their kits then they're especially frustrated because they have nothing so like no 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 i think that's a great idea that's a great idea 
And even that still can circle back to that time for themselves because we're not saying you have to sell these. Like we're giving you yeah. to do what you want, like, especially if they sold their kit because then they have nothing. But you know, we we're stressing be a product of the product. Well, then if they don't have any product, then what? You know. So I love that, Holly. That's Look I at love that. Body quote. Thanks, Al. <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, so we'll do that. So we'll do, um, I mean, don't feel like you have to put in a set. Just whatever we get, I'll, you know, if we don't have enough, I'll cover the rest. Um, uh, and probably the best thing to do, I guess, would just be to send it all to one of us and we ship it. Um, maybe like whoever, if, well, maybe if, if, if it's one of ours, like okay. if one of our people, like, you know what I mean? Like if one of my girls, is the winner maybe it's easier to just send what we're going to send her to me and then i just send it to her or if it's one of holly's <coughs> or just send all, all to you jackie and you can you can figure it out yeah we'll figure that out okay. or just whoever whoever wins their stylist we can send it to their yeah like I well i guess their leader yeah <coughs> Um, okay, one minute. All right, hold on one second, guys. What? Okay, go upstairs to your bathroom if you need to. No, it's already plugged up now. Your bathroom is? No, that one. I want to ask my. All right. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to do this week. Screenshot your Facebook party or the event. You get an entry into a drawing for 10 sets. We're doing two. Okay. So we're doing Sunday to Sunday or Saturday yeah. to Saturday? I think Sunday to Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Um, because that gives, I mean, you can easily... And like, if, even if you don't have any book right now, you can easily ask people.